Recently we had a uh, house fire in our first due where we had a gas issue. Um, there was a problem shutting the gas off and the, the uh, pipe had burst above and was causing a flame that was going into the attic. And there was a little bit of confusion about how to turn gas off. So we're, today we're going to talk about the different types of shutoffs, uh, what the meters look like, what the mains look like, and just get familiar with uh, gas meters in general. So if we take a look at this bank here, this happens to be on a small apartment complex, but these are the same kind of meters that you would find on a house. There would just be an individual meter rather than the four together. So let's first of all talk about the main for this bank of meters, and that would be right here. Um, you can see it comes up out of the ground, and there's a valve right here. That, that valve for this bank, if you shut that off, it shuts off the entire bank of meters. The regulator is right after that main valve, okay? So the, the pressure that's coming in from the supply side is whatever it is, and then it's regulated down by this regulator so what's going into the house is, is less than what's coming out of the ground. So then we have this first meter, and if you'll notice, the shutoff for this, right now you can see it's in the open position. The line of the valve is in the same line as the pipe. That shows you that it's on. Okay, if you can look at the back of this valve, it just has a packing nut on the back side of that valve. Okay, so what that means is, with that valve in the on position, if you go to turn it off, if this packing valve isn't quite tight, you can just keep turning this valve. If you don't know what you're doing, you may think that you're turning it like you're shutting a bolt down, but in reality, you're, not, you're just opening and closing the valve. So what it needs to be done is, if it's in this position, it's on. If it's perpendicular to the pipe, so it would be like this, then that valve is off. So all you gotta do is turn it one quarter of a turn in either direction, and you've shut off the valve. And that was the confusion that we had on that fire was, they just kept turning that valve thinking that they were doing something and all they were doing is turning it on and off, okay? So then if we go over to this next valve, it has the same packing nut on the back side. The valve is on, it's in the, perpendic or in the uh, parallel position. If you turn it perpendicular, it'll be off, okay? This next valve has a more recent style of shutoff. You see the difference between this valve and this valve in that this has no um, lock on the outside, whereas this has a lock. If you turn this, you can only turn it a quarter of a turn, won't let you go any further. And once you reach the quarter of a turn, then these two line up and you can lock out that valve so that uh, Southwest gas can come and, sh and lock it down so that no gas will be allowed through that meter. This one, same thing. Right now it's in the parallel position. If you turn it perpendicular, these two will line up and you can lock it out. You cannot turn it any further than just one quarter of a turn. So that's the difference between the new style and the old style, is in the new style, you can't really do it wrong. You turn it a quarter of a turn, it's off, that's all you get. With these, you might be able to turn it for who knows how many turns because it might be loose. Uh, this, because it's a bank that's heavy, it has a support. Some people might think this is another supply side pipe. It's not, it's just a threaded pipe that holds this bank of uh, meters up, okay? So let's talk about what happened with the uh, fire that we had the other day. It was just a single meter. So let's say we just had to right here, we had the supply coming up, we had the regulator, and we had one meter. And it had this old style valve on it. So the engineer who was assigned the uh, utilities came down to shut this off. Well, first of all, the pipe had burst, there was gas venting out, it had caught fire, it was blowing up into the attic of this residence. So he comes down to try to shut the valve off. He was obviously a little intimidated by the fact that there was a fire there. There was an engine company with a hose line. He went to try to shut it off and he just kept turning that valve, okay? Wasn't doing anything. So another engineer came down went to the main here and just shut it off. One quarter of a turn, perpendicular to the pipe, and the gas was shut off, okay? So let's talk about if this had burst on the supply side, we'd have a whole different story, okay? 
On the supply side, there is no valve that the fire department can access. That's a southwest gas issue. So if you have flame coming out of the bottom side of the valve, there's nothing that you're going to be able to do about that. You're going to have to have a hose line in place. You're going to have to try to keep it um, as subdued as you can until southwest gas arrives to shut off the main to that building. If, however, it's on this side, once you've shut off this valve, whether it be a quarter of a turn because you have the new style or a quarter of a turn with the old style, you've shut off the fuel to the meter side and you're going to stop the fire. So with that being said, if you have a gas-fed fire at a meter, the first thing you need to have is a supply line, somebody manning it to hold that at bay as best you can until someone gets up there to shut that valve off. If the line is open and it's spewing out gas and there is no flame, then we have that um, gas-rich environment and that could be really dangerous for anybody standing here. So if you can see that the valve is, the line is broken and you obviously have a gas leak and you have no line in place, you shouldn't be around that area. You have to wait until you have a hose line there. If the valve is still open and you're the guy manning the hose line, you shouldn't be putting out that fire because then you just have that gas um, spewing out and enriching the environment with that gas. So it has to be a coordinated effort. You have to have someone ready to shut the valve off. You have to have the guy with the hose line. He shuts the line off. Then you can put out whatever fire is created by the gas that had already vented. We're in a uh, apartment complex in our first due, like any complex that you're going to find in any first due. And most of the time on your mapping, there's not going to be any indication of where the utilities are. So depending on the structure and where the buildings are and what have you, you may not um, see right away where to shut the gas off, where to turn the power off. And so there may be a little investigation having to take place to find all that. So we drive in through the gate and we come into this building. We'll say that the fire's a couple of apartments down. And this is the first thing that we encounter. It looks like any kind of a utility deal. And it has a regulator on it, but it has no meter. So you may be wondering, you know, what is this even? Is it gas? Is it whatever? It's obviously gas. It does have a regulator on it. So we have the supply line and the feed side, and there's no handle. There should be a handle right here, but it's been removed. Either it fell off, broke off, somebody stole it, we don't know. So there's no way to shut this gas off at this particular place. So that means you're gonna have to go somewhere else to shut off the gas. Um, this goes into a laundry room down below, and uh, it probably feeds three or four dryers. So if the fire was close to this laundry room, you need to be able to shut that off. You can't risk having that gas still flowing through those dryers. So we need to find the main to shut this off, and we'll look at that in a minute, where the main comes in for this, this complex. Okay, on that last uh, bank of gas meters, we talked about the two types of shutoffs. There's the uh, old school one that you could conceivably just keep turning, and then there's the newer style, and this happens to have the newer style of valve. Uh, if you look at this uh, assembly in its totality, it's a lot bigger pipe, bigger regulators, everything just looks big. So if you came and were assigned to uh, shut off the gas on this, you might be a little intimidated by just the sheer size of it. But the point of the matter is that this is no different than what we saw earlier. It's just bigger pipe. You shut it off the same way, use the same tool, nothing really has changed. So if we look at this uh, manifold here, this is the supply side of the gas line. This is just a stub out where they could have added something um, in the future, they may. And we talked earlier about uh, Southwest Gas being able to lock out the valve, and that's exactly what has happened here. This valve is in the perpendicular positions so that any gas that's coming through here is stopped right here at this valve, and then they put this pin in when these two holes line up, which would line up when this was turned to here, they've pinned it out and so it's locked out. Unless they come in with their tool and take this pin out, you can't access that valve. So um, 
coming up to this main shutoff. This is the main shutoff for this entire assembly of, of gas. And you can see right now that that valve is in the parallel position. So the gas is flowing up this pipe. If you were to turn this one quarter turn, it's going to be perpendicular. It's going to look just like this one does. And the gas will have stopped right here. No gas goes any further than this point right here. But right now it's open, so it's coming through here. Here's the regulator coming in from the main. You can see how much bigger it is than that last smaller regulator that we had at the other bank of uh, gas meters, but it's the same thing. It reduces the pressure from the supply side, I mean, pardon me, from, yeah, from the supply side um, to wherever it's going in the complex. Uh, this is just the meter that they look at to see how much gas is being used. It just keeps a running count of what's going on with the gas coming through. Here again, we have the, the pipe that I talked about. It's just a, a support for the manifold. Um, it's threaded on both ends. All it does is hold up the weight of the pipe, okay? Uh, here we have another little stub out where they could, in the future, add something. You can see it's capped off here. You can see it's pinned out. The valve is perpendicular to the pipe. It's capped out, pinned out. No gas is coming through past this point. Um, Here's where the gas is going down into either this boiler or it's somewhere remotely. And so there's a uh, handle down here for both of these. And you can see, even though it's a different style handle, it again is in the parallel position on both these pipes, okay? If you were to turn it a quarter of a turn, you would have it perpendicular to the pipe and you would stop the flow past that point, okay? So there's a third type of handle that you might encounter but the uh, way to shut it off is the same. It's either parallel to the pipe, indicating that there is flow, or it's perpendicular to the pipe, indicating that you've shut it off. In this case, we don't really know where all this goes, so the best thing to do is go back to the main where it's coming in and shut it off at that valve.